Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and today we're gonna be talking about my top five favorite Daredevil stories. That's right, everybody. Thanks for checking out the video. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups. This is going to be my top five favorite Daredevil stories of all time. We're talking about full collected stories like trade paperbacks, graphic novels, whatever you want to call it, runs if you want to call it like that. And yes, there's going to be a lot of Frank Miller. So let's just get right into it. At number five, I'm going the Brian Michael Bendis Alex Maleev run. This was such a great run of Daredevil and a great follow-up to their pairing on Sam and Twitch over at Image Comics. This was a fantastic book that really dived deep into the character, had some really nice gritty artwork, and had a lot of big impactful moments for Matt Murdock that still are reverberating out today. In particular, the idea that the identity of Daredevil is outed in this book, right? So you got this story that involves one of this, this dude who's showing up to work for the kingpin. He's like an underboss or something. He finds out that Wilson Fisk knows that Daredevil is Matt Murdock and everybody kind of knows this but they leave it alone because the kingpin wants it that way, right? Well, he sees this as a sign of weakness so he formulates this whole plan to kind of overtake the kingpin out Matt Murdock as Daredevil and it comes to be a really exceptional and fun run that really picks up on a lot of the stuff that Miller did and even other creators like Ann Nacenti and, of course, uh, Kevin Smith, David Mack, the whole Marvel Knights type thing, right? When Marvel Knights started and it launched Kevin Smith's Daredevil, that was great. And then David Mack came in and then Bendis and, and, and David Mack had a really cool book called Wake Up. But it was kind of lingering around, right? You just had a bunch of different creative teams coming in, doing their stories, doing their, their thing, right? But not really an extended run building on itself and propelling forward. That's what Bendis and Malib were able to do. The artwork is amazing. The coloring is top notch. I recently did my top five Bendis books and this was very close to making that list. This is a solid run. At number four, we're going Daredevil, The Man Without Fear, written by Frank Miller with artwork by John Romita Jr. This is, to me, the definitive origin of Daredevil. There are plenty of books you can pick up on, Daredevil Yellow by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. That's a pretty fine book. The old school stuff, of course, by Stan Lee and Bill Everett and Gene Colan, all that stuff's fine. But this is it right here. Definitely a big inspiration for the Daredevil Netflix TV show. Um, even the, the pre-costume Daredevil look where he's just like in the black ninja suit with the with a mask that covers his eyes completely. This is really great. So Frank Miller had already established himself as pretty much one of the definitive Daredevil creators back in the 80s. And then in the early 90s, he gets the chance to kind of reformulate the origin, make it all make sense, tie it all in together, including the Electra stuff, which I thought was really great. John Romita Jr., you know, a lot of people love him, a lot of people hate him, some people are in the middle, I love him, and this to me is one of his best works. I absolutely love the grit, the dirty nature sometimes of the line work in this book. The artistic quality of it is exceptionally well done for me. And the story, I love the building up, the origin, the father, the tying in with Elektra and making it all kind of make sense in one cohesive narrative that totally sets up everything that's to come afterwards, which was actually published before. Anyway, fantastic book. At number three, I'm going Parts of a Whole, written by David Mack with artwork by Joe Quesada, Jim Palmiotti, and of course David Mack. This was the introduction of Echo, Maya Lopez, and that was fantastic. Elektra is one of my favorite characters, one of my favorite Daredevil-centric characters, but Echo filled a place in Daredevil's life that I thought needed to be filled, right? His relationship with, say, Elektra or Karen Page, all that stuff works and it's essential to the mythology and the lore and the building up of the character of Matt Murdock, aka Daredevil. But with Echo, he was able to kind of have a relationship with someone who also had a disability that they had to overcome, right? Because Maya Lopez was deaf, but she has this ability where she can mimic any kind of behavior. She can see you one time and mimic your moves. So she's a dancer, but she's also like this enforcer for Kingpin, kind of like a little bit of an assassin. So you're going into the whole Electra trope and idea there, but at the same time, having a different side of the relationship aspect. Matt and Electra, they're kind of 
they're kind of brought, drawn together through this like wild side, right? But with Maya, there was a more there was more of a tenderness to that relationship, which made it even more tragic when it all kind of falls apart. I love this book. Joe Casada's artwork is amazing, especially those moments where David Mack comes in and, and and offers some coloring, some painting over that line work. Really great stuff. I thought it was super solid, and it still maintains as one of my favorite Daredevil comics. At number two. Let's just call it the Electra Saga. That original Frank Miller stuff, when he started writing the book Daredevil, you know, because he came on as the artist, and there was another writer, and it was pretty decent, it's okay. But as soon as Frank Miller takes over as the writer, the book turns into something completely different and game-changing for Daredevil. In fact, it not only changed the game for Daredevil, it changed the game for comic books, widescreen panels, really great choreographed action sequences, um, a lack of thought bubbles, more focus on narration, things like that. This is something that would come to define the comic book industry even into today. Frank Miller's work on this is absolutely amazing. The highlight for me is the creation of the character of Elektra. That backstory that her and Matt were in love back in college. She went through tragedy. She left. She became this stone-cold assassin, and now she works for the Kingpin, and now she has to go after Daredevil. But they're star-crossed lovers, and they, they, they're, they're against each other. You know, it's something that obviously David Mack picked up on for the Echo relationship in parts of a whole, like we were just talking about, but this was the original original idea of it. And I love that wild side, you know? Matt Murdock is this almost studious, slightly stoic, Catholic-based type character, and then to have Elektra come in and throw it out, and, and like, to, to bring alive something inside of him that maybe he tries to deny. What a fantastic book, right? What a fantastic run. The artistic-wise was absolutely fantastic, but the ability that Frank Miller had to step in as the writer and immediately change everything, make it work, bringing in the Kingpin. Kingpin was kind of a goofy mafia Spider-Man villain before this. This makes him more threatening, more serious, more grounded, more real, right? And then the death of Elektra, the usage of Bullseye, holy freaking cow. You know, Frank Miller may not have created Wilson Fisk the Kingpin and may not have created Bullseye, but let me tell you something, he really helped shape them into what makes them such impactful and important characters today. This run is a classic. The entire Frank Miller run is so strong. We're just going to call it the Electra Saga, but 181, The Death of Electra, one of my favorite single issue comics of all time. The uh, the, the issue shortly after that where Bullseye's and... In, in, in the hospital prison and he's in a full body cask and Matt shows up and he's doing like Russian roulette with him. Like what a freaking fantastic run. Really great, super strong, and it's number two. And at number one, come on y'all, you know it's Frank Miller's Daredevil Born Again with David Mazzucchelli on the artwork. Holy freaking cow. You know, for years I always said that the Electra Saga was my favorite. Right? Like, I like Born Again, but the Electra Saga was my favorite because I love that Frank Miller artwork. But as I've grown older, the more I appreciate really what David Mazzucchelli can do. He's one of the absolute best comic book storytellers out there. His work is flawless. Check out his work on Batman Year One with Frank Miller. And then you got Born Again. This is the ultimate Daredevil story. If you only ever read one Daredevil story in your life, this is the one you got to read, right? It's the famous story where Karen Page, former love interest for Daredevil, she is down on her luck, right? She is, she's, she's, she's struggling to make ends meet. She's addicted to drugs. She's been, uh, you know, she's been in, in situations that she doesn't want to be in, right? And at one point, in order to get the next fix, in order to try to get through that day, she sells the information that Matt Murdock is Daredevil. This is how Wilson Fisk finds out, right? And what he uses with this information, right? He, he decides to design a plan to not just kill Daredevil or take out Matt Murdock, but to literally just destroy him from the inside out, right? This is one of the greatest character arcs you're ever going to see in a superhero comic book, the breaking of Daredevil and how he comes from absolutely having, you know, really great stuff to having nothing and how he builds that back up and truly becomes a hero, Yet again, this was a great journey, a great character arc. The writing is freaking fantastic, but the artwork and the coloring is even better. I think it excels over that original Miller stuff. And I love that Miller stuff. It changed the industry. But what Mazza Kelly does here, along with the story that Miller's crafting, is absolutely 
gut-wrenching, heartbreaking, heartwarming. It's everything. It makes you feel. This is one of the best superhero comic books of all time. Daredevil Born Again. If you're one of those few people who have never read it, you definitely have to. And I'm not the only one saying this. It's the best Daredevil story there ever was, ever is, and just may ever be. Anyway, that's my top five favorite Daredevil stories of all time. What are your top five favorite Daredevil comics? Let us know in the comments down below. Let's keep this conversation going. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Join us over at patreon.com slash PCP if you want to help support the channel. I've been Rockin' Robbie Billups. Thanks for rocking with us. Station, keep on rocking, keep on reading. Pop, pop, boom! Boom!